Hello, welcome to my channel, My Student Support System. In today's class, we will discuss an important disorder of childhood that is stenosis. As you know that this lecture is in English and if you want to study in Hindi, you can just click on I button so that you can get link of the lecture in Hindi and you can also go to my channel, My Student Support System for that video. Let us start. What is pyloric stenosis? Pyloric stenosis is narrowing of the opening from stomach to the first part of small intestine that is known as pylorus and symptoms include projectile vomiting without presence of bile. This is cardinal symptom of pyloric stenosis and sometime in examination you will may be asked in oral examination that name the disease in which you see the uh, projectile vomiting. So the answer is pyloric stenosis. Here you can see that this is small intestine starts from here and this is pyloric stenosis circular muscles. They are hypertrophied and the lumen becomes narrow. It may be present at birth but, or it may develop later and is characterized by hypertrophy of circular muscles of pylorus. Now sign and symptom of pyloric stenosis. The pyloric stenosis presents with vomiting after feeding. The baby may vomit eject, ejecting the breast milk or formula which we are giving to the child to several feet away. This is known as projectile vomiting. Vomiting may, might be mild at first but gradually it becomes more severe as the pyloric stenosis narrows. The vomit may sometimes contain blood but no bile. Second is persistent hunger. Babies who have pyloric stenosis often want to eat. They cry for this because there is no absorption of nutrients and child feeds hungry. Another sign and symptom includes stomach contraction. You may notice a wave-like contraction or peristalsis that goes across the baby's upper abdomen soon after feeding. But before vomiting, as stomach muscles try to force the food through narrowed pylorus, but if they do not success and the food is coming out as vomitus. Another important symptom is dehydration. The child becomes dehydrated because milk is not reaching to small intestine and it is not absorbed. The baby may cry without tears and become lethargic. There is change in bowel movement. Since pyloric stenosis prevent food from reaching the intestine, babies with this condition might have constipation weight problem the child are not the children are not getting weight they are not gaining weight pyloric stenosis lead to weight loss as no absorption of nutrition is taking place the child become malnourished and another important sign you may feel on palpation a palpable mask that known as Pyloric palpable mass is felt on the upper right quadrant of the abdomen of child. Now we come to diagnostic investigation. How we will diagnose this disease? First is history. When we take history that projectile vomiting is there after each feed, we can suspect yes, there may be pyloric stenosis. Then physical examination and on palpation we may find palpable pyloric mass and then x-ray examination x-ray examination after barium meal we inject barium and we can see the x-ray that there is narrowing in the pylorus then blood investigation routine blood investigation including serum electrolytes and abg analysis can be done now what treatment is done for pyloric stenosis 
of course surgery is there surgery is needed to treat the pyloric stenosis the procedure is known as pyloromyotomy is often scheduled on the same day as the diagnosis if your baby is dehydrated then elect or Im electrolyte imbalance then we may uh, provide fluid replacement before surgery in pyloromyotomy the surgeon cut only through the outside layer of thickened pylorus muscle allowing the inner lining to bulge out and this opens a channel for food to pass through the small intestine now we come to what nursing management we can provide for the children we can divide the nursing management in two groups pre operative and post operative pre operatively just we check the vital signs continue to monitor and record it dehydration and electrolyte imbalance is treated as per doctor's order iv fluid infusion may be needed the small feeds are given slowly and the child is burped frequently the infant should be kept in upright position on right side with head slightly elevated parents are explained about the disorder treatment procedure and all the questions are answered to alleviate the anxiety sometimes nasogastric tube is in place so nasogastric tube care and frequent suctioning should be done after surgery or post operatively proper observation of vital signs and monitoring should be done watch out for abdominal distension and should be reported immediately to the pediatrician iv fluids should be maintained as per doctor's order test feed is offered after 6 hours after surgery and if it is tolerated then breast milk can be given using expressed breast milk parents are explained about follow up and the care after discharge other nursing in interventions includes all the nursing care of hospitalized child that we have discussed in previous lecture under the heading nursing care of hospitalized child in the lecture child health nursing you can watch that lecture by clicking on i button thank you students for watching complete video you can visit my channel on youtube my student support system and for making your notes you can visit blog my nursing students blogspot.com you can join the group on facebook nursing notes when you will see this icon in nursing uh, facebook group you can join and you can follow on twitter at the rate student underscore support thank you